In this tutorial, we are gonna take a look at how to turn this photo into this photo. And we are mainly gonna use the brushes inside of Lightroom and in Photoshop Camera Raw to do it. Well, folks, my name is Matt Kleskowski. I wanna welcome you to this tutorial. This is a, a really fun one for me because I use brushes on so many of my photos. It's such an important part of my workflow. And there's a couple of settings, whether it's Lightroom or uh, Photoshop's uh, Camera Raw, there's a couple of settings, specifically density and flow, that can make such a big difference. And I see so many questions on it because in some ways, it, it's kind of it's kind of easy to miss what they do. And then sometimes when you see what they do, it almost looks like they do the same thing, but they're actually very different. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at that. You can uh, you can actually download this file if you just check the link in the description. You can go grab it if you want to follow along. And let's go ahead and get started here. So. Uh, we're going to start off, I'm going to hit the reset button right here inside of Lightroom and we'll start off, I'll show you the quick camera settings if you're interested, uh, ISO 800, 18 millimeters, F11, six seconds, so you know, nice little waterfall shot, this is a waterfall just outside of Portland, Oregon, and what we're going to do is, uh, is head over here to the basic panel, probably warm it up a little bit, just add some, some overall warmth to it pull back on my, my highlights a little bit, open up my shadows a bit. I actually think contrast between whites and blacks looks fine. Probably go in and throw a little bit of sharpening on this one, lots of details so I can crank it up to almost 100%. And, uh, and then come down here to lens corrections. If I enable the profile corrections, it'll just let me, um, it'll let me get rid of a little bit of that edge distortion and vignetting that you see in there sometimes. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. We're gonna go choose the adjustment brush here inside of Lightroom. And if you were to hop over to Photoshop, you were to choose the adjustment brush in the top left corner, you will see the settings are exactly the same. They are the same tool, works exactly the same. There's no differences between the two. So if you're using Photoshop, settings are the same. In fact, if you're in Photoshop or maybe a program like Affinity Photo, you might even find settings like Flow for some of your brushes. So if you learn what it does here, you'll actually uh, understand what it does there as well. Okay, let's head back over here to Lightroom. Let's take, care of the, uh, let's take care of the big settings here, which is gonna be size and feather. These are, you've probably seen these. Size, obviously the size of the brush, big or small. You can use the right and left bracket key to make them bigger or smaller. And then the feather is how hard the edge is. At a low feather setting, it's a very hard edge, okay? At a higher feather setting, it's a very soft edge. And you can see the difference between the two. I didn't change anything but the feather setting in that example there. So you can see the inner ring and the outer ring and, and the, the further along those, those rings get from each other, the more that brush is gonna feather and, uh, and soften out on the edges there. Okay, so let's reset that. Um, we're gonna start off simple here. I'm gonna bring my exposure down and uh, I'm get a fairly large brush and let's just let's just brush in that background. That wall was getting a little bit getting a little bit bright there. And and as I go through this, you know, for me guys, this is this is the some of the biggest things that I do to my photo. I, as once I get past the technical settings of you know just the overall toning and and lens corrections and just the the techy kind of boring stuff. This is the stuff that brings my photos to life. I spend most of my time here rather than with the sliders because I can, I can really draw your attention to things and make the photo come alive. So in this case here, I darkened everything. I'm gonna go down here to erase and I didn't pay too much attention to the waterfall. So I'll just go over there and just kind of swipe right down and it's gonna brighten that up. It basically just erases the effect from there. A lot of people ask what the A and B settings do, they're just brush presets. So you can click here between the two and you, you don't really set them, it just remembers it just remembers your last setting. So if, you know, sometimes I have a very feathered brush for A and a very hard edge brush uh, for B inside of there. Okay, now let's get to, yeah, that's probably a little bit too dark for me though. Now let's get to the, uh, let's get to the fun stuff. We're gonna go down here to flow. So what's flow do? Flow to me comes in really handy when, when I want to do this dodging and burning in the photo and I want it, I, I, I want to be very creative with it. Okay. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to have some areas that are going to be brighter, darker. And as I'm painting around, 
I want to be able to control that brightness and darkness of those areas. So what I can do is start to uh, start to mess with the flow. So let's take a look at an example here. The first thing I have to do is I have to click on new because I want to add a whole new adjustment pin for my, my flow here. And I want to brighten things. So I'm going to exaggerate this. I'm going to crank this up to about three. Leave my flow at 100%. And uh, let's, bring the, let's bring the feather way down just so we can see as an example here. And I'm going to brush. What I just did there is if you were to think of, think of the way flow works, I set my exposure to plus three, whatever your sliders are, I set my exposure to plus three. That's the upper limit. That's the cap of, of where this is going to go. And then flow is set to 100. So when I brush, it's 100% of plus three. So let's undo this. And let's bring flow down to 50%. Now when I brush, it just brushed with 50% of three, whatever that, whatever that number was. But as I brush more, I've just added the other 50%. And now I can go in here and I can brush and brush and brush. And it's not going to get any brighter than plus three. Plus three is my cap. That's the limit that I have here. Okay. So with flow at 50%, I get two swipes before I get there. Now let's go ahead. Let's delete that one. Let's bring our flow down to about 25%. So what's going to happen here? Well, I brush, that's 25% of three, whatever number that would be, 75. Um, then I brush again, that's another 25%. I brush again, it's another 25%. I brush again, it's another 25%. And now no matter how much I go back and forth, I'm never getting above that three. It just took me longer to get there with a lower flow number. Okay, so that's what flow does. Now, how would I use that in real life? Well, in real life, I'd probably give myself an upper cap here, uh, give myself a lower flow setting like I have here, and I would brush my left bracket key, make it a little smaller. I would brush around the rocks that I want to make brighter. Okay, and then this rock particular, I want it to be brighter, so I'll brush a couple more times over it. I want this rock to get brighter. If I wanted to get it even brighter, I can brush again. Okay. Remember, I'll never go above 2.5 though, but this lets me at least vary that throughout. And that's generally what you're going to want to do when you're doing this type of work is you're going to want to vary it. Now, when you're using, when you're doing this technique, chances are you're being very creative about it. You're, you're, you know, it's a, it's kind of a very, it's use the word flow. It's a very flowing process. You're not necessarily being exact. You're kind of just going where the photo kind of pulls you along and you're being very creative with it. But that works in these cases for, for what we're using here for flow, even a little bit down here. Now let's get to density. So I'm going to crank my flow up to a hundred here and, uh, and let's go ahead and let's put our, let's put our exposure way back up at three. So density, think of density as opacity. So at a hundred percent opacity at, you know, What's this about three at a hundred percent opacity when I, and let's go ahead and click new. Let's get a new adjustment pin. When I paint, I just painted with a hundred percent of three, or in this case, I thought I put it at three. Let's put it back. I just painted with a hundred percent of it. Okay. Let's delete that. Now let's bring our density down here to 50 and I paint, I now just painted with 50% of three, which is 1.5. But here's the difference with density is no matter how many times I go over it, it's not going to change. I can keep going over and painting over and over and over, and it will not build up to that three because I've set the density at 50%. It's never going to go higher than 50% of three, which in this case is 1.5. So here's what begs the question is if you're wondering, that sounds a lot like opacity. And if this were the case, why wouldn't I just put the exposure at 1.5? Okay. Cause that's all it's doing here is it just, it's pulling me back to 1.5. Why wouldn't I just pull the exposure back there? It's not building, it's not graduating up or anything like that. So why not just put the density at one or the exposure at 1.5? Here's why. If you're getting into a situation that requires a little bit more, 
a little bit more finesse and a little bit, I say finesse and also exact, a, l- a little bit more exact in the nature of what you're painting on. What you can do here is you can start to vary the density. And what I mean by that is, as an example, if I were to, if I were to let's say I wanted to make, let's say I wanted to make these rocks brighter, okay? And I'm gonna put my exposure up at 1.0. 1. 1. 1. 1. Let's say I wanna make these rocks brighter. Well, I would paint and I just set everything to plus one exposure. What about if I wanna make this rock a little bit brighter than this rock? And I wanna be a little bit more exact about it. I don't necessarily wanna use the flow method where I can build. I, I, need to, I, I really need to be a little bit more finite about this. Well, what would I have to do? I'd have to go to new. I'd have to make a new brush pin and then I'd have to set it to something and paint over this rock because I can't do it with I can't do it with with any other setting here. So I'd have to create a new brush adjustment and paint over that rock if I wanted to vary these. And what I realized started happening in my workflow is that I had these little brush pins all over the place. Okay? Without density, with keeping density at 100, my only choice was to just create new brush pins when I wanted to vary how much I wanted to paint and be exact about it in certain places. With density, let's go ahead and delete that. With density, what I can do is I can set a number and I can go and I can paint. I can paint. And if I decide I wanna make something brighter, rather than click new and make a whole new adjustment brush pin, I can just go over here and maybe pull my density up a little bit and then paint over here. I basically just increase the opacity of that brush. If I want to make something even brighter, I can increase the density and then come down here and paint. All right. If I want to still keep with the same brush, but maybe not as much, now I can decrease the density and I can go over here and I can paint. So I'm going to delete that because I don't know that I would paint all that stuff as bright as I was painting it, but that's the difference because what you'll end up with is you'll have one brush pin, but you'll have varying densities all throughout the image and you can be a little bit more exact about it than you can with your flow setting in here. So in this case, what I would do is crank that setting up. I'd go over here, maybe brush down here a little bit, brush in there, uh, maybe increase the density a little bit, brush down here brush over here a little bit. I'd create one more new adjustment and I'd reduce the exposure. And I think I would, uh, it's a probably a little bit too much there. Reduce the exposure and I'd come down here and paint a little bit down here at the bottom just to darken some of those areas. And draw some light throughout the photo there. Okay, like so. Uh, if you want to see the before and after, there's a little toggle switch right down here. You can see that's before and that's after. And then overall, I think, you know, I might have gone a little bit too, uh, a little bit too bright in a couple areas. You can always hover over and you can see what you've painted on. So in this case, maybe I pull that back a little bit. All right. And then when I'm done, if it were me, I'd probably throw a little bit of a vignette on here. I put a vignette on a lot of my landscape photos just to tame the edges a little bit. I throw that on there, maybe increase the whites overall just a little bit and a little bit more warmth. Want to see the before and after? Let's take a look here. I'll hit the backslash key. That's before and that is after. So guys, I hope that helps out. These were these are settings I know they've played people for years and years and years. Uh, hopefully it helps you out a little bit because they are very useful settings and kind of understanding where they go, how they're used can really save you a lot of work, especially if you're gonna go back and re-edit your photo and you open it up to that brush, you don't wanna see 25 little brush pins around there and hopefully this, uh, these little tricks help keep you from that. Guys, thanks for watching. Talk to you again real soon.